I don't have a print anymore. Just take my shirt off. I have. A, I don't. I don't. I don't print a copy out. But I'm so sorry. Yeah, maybe. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm not a bug baby. I'm not a bug baby. And then after the general agenda, go on down to the other. Yeah, yeah. Because they give a full agenda. Excellent. They will uh, put their name on the flag. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chief. But I thought, well, if you'd applied for a million and we had done what was required, of course, maybe they would have done like 450000 Yeah. 160 times 45. Yeah. So, you would like to put the jeans. I love to take that. Yeah. We got about seven minutes. Or they didn't have holes in it. Yeah. Yeah, I do that too. Oh, Thanks okay. for the call. Okay. I appreciate oh, it. Yeah. 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 So you know the size and sure fit. Chris, if you write that girl's name down, you thought within the Peace Corps, I'll do what I can to look at all the oh. Peace Corps books and see if I can find it for you. Oh, okay, okay. cool. Well, Because you know there's um, people who want to be in the address book and people who are members of the Rickland Volunteers Council. Mm -hmm. That information is available to me, so I can look and see if you write her name down. Okay. It sounded kind of complicated to me, but I I couldn't remember. You know, I'm really bad about remembering things yeah. like that. So just write it down and hand it to me. Tell me that's who it is and see if I can find her. Do they need a letter for the No, but you'll need them to be sure. Oh, no, I didn't. So it's a 1460. And then you put your arms down. But that's okay. Because we're next year, so Yeah, I'm glad it came up. That's when you like to relax. You guys weren't going that fast anyway, so still. Here you go. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I, I didn't know if the years might be of help. Or... Um, we'll see. Some of them are listed by years. Okay. And, um, some by group, what country they went to, but it okay. should be in, in this day and age with the ability to use control all um, uh -huh. search, it should be able to find it. Cool. If I have the CD, I think I'd probably find it. Yeah, she, she may have. She got married, that would be hard. Yeah, that would be hard because the last name would be different. Yeah. <coughs> but sometimes they listed the name they went in under, so... Up at the hospital? Yes. So it would be interesting. What state anyway, was that, she from? That was the trajectory she was on, on in 1970, whether she went in in 72 or not, that I don't know. What state was she from? Uh, she was here in Phoenix, Arizona. So. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys. Yesterday was a Peruvian religious holiday, and I was talking to them live on the phone, just like a Skype. They're showing me this apple, it's this big, and from one of the farms here. They're having a family dinner, and it was like, they were so jealous. They go, what are you eating? I go, double bowl. Which is American religious. Yeah, I was jealous. Construction said no horses. And he had to have, if he had any dogs or anything, they had to have to come along. So I don't know if they were trying to run the bag or not. Yeah, it was behind us. See if I can get my wind out. But I'm going to say, like, the five seals were diaper bags. Right, yeah. That's all. Yeah, it's over. Good, I'm glad it worked. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> yeah, we got this year. Didn't get one for my son. Got one. So I got that. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, you guys see you said it was in Colorado somewhere, guys. Oh, yeah, there's some. But those are elk. elk. Oh, yeah, they have the, 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 the elk. I should have it done by the end of the week. I got to sit. But yeah, I know. This is 50. Well, good deal. All right, thanks. I know, but he can't do that much walking. I mean, just find the musician. Okay. Because it tells you, the schedule tells you who's playing. Greg, what's going on? I didn't get a kiss. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I should bring that in. I got out of the have you seen his hat? No. Oh, you need to see his hat. You need to see it, huh? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. He didn't kill us and want to buy it, so. <laughs> I can hardly yeah, wait. What does it look like? It. It's a Santa hat. It. It's okay. It's Thanks. All the off stuff going out. The so. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> According to the guy. According to the, yeah. 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 They harassed me. <laughs> Would anybody get up and wear that stupid hat? Yeah. Well, you know, Chief, you are a never ending source of surprises. Yeah. yeah. It's better, better than cable, isn't it? Yeah. You learn? No, I'm listening. Light the fire, kick yeah, the tires. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we're pretty close. It is. It's right up there. So we're we're missing Councilman Turner. Going to participate by phone tonight. <laughs> I got enough friends here tonight. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, you guys ready? Let's go ahead. Can you hear us okay, Mike? 
Councilman Best, can you hear us okay? Hey, Mike. Sleeping. Okay, just wanted to make sure you could hear us. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Please uh, rise and remove your hats for the invocation. Please bow your head. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here as a town council. Help us make those decisions that best suit the, the community. Watch over our family. Bring them, young men and women overseas, home safely. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Introductions, presentations, and proclamations. We do not have any Roll list. call? Oh, sure. <laughs> you want to do the roll call? Okay. Good idea. Now you want to do the roll call. <laughs> Council Member McKee. Here. Council Member Turner. Here. Council Member Wojcik. Here. Council Member Hatch. Here. Council Member Best. Here. Vice Mayor Croft. Here. And Mayor Marley. <laughs> Here. Now onward to introductions, presentations, and proclamations. Uh, there are none listed, so the next item is our call to the public. Call to the public is an opportunity for the public to address the council concerning a subject that's not on the agenda. Public comment is encouraged, but individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. Total time for call to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date, or responding to criticism. Do we have anyone for call to the public? Ma'am, I believe you are. Hello, my name is Bridget Malfer. I am a local community coordinator for the Council for Educational Travel USA, uh, also known as SETUSA. And uh, SETUSA is a nonprofit international high school exchange program. And uh, we place students from 40 different countries uh, all over the United States. They come for either one or two semesters of the school year. Uh, our students are screened for their English proficiency, their uh, good grades, maturity, and motivation. They arrive with their own insurance and their own spending money. Uh, the host family, the families who host them are expected to provide basic room and board, um, meals in the home and transportation for them. Uh, this is my second year uh, working with Satusa in this area. And so far, uh, we've, in the last two school years, we've placed students at uh, Chino Valley High School, at Prescott High School, and North Point Expeditionary Academy. They've all done well, and they've really enjoyed their time in this area. Um, we're currently in need of host families for the spring semester. Uh, we still have students available uh, from Brazil and from China uh, who are looking for placements somewhere in the United States. Uh, we also have students from many other countries available for um, placement in the fall. And uh, Chino High School uh, loves to have the students. Um, they've given us uh, four spots for um, each school year so far. So uh, anyone who might be interested in sharing the American dream with an international student, um, I have uh, flyers up front uh, with my information and information about the program. Uh, you can also go online to www.satusa.org uh, for more information about our program. So thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Melford. You might want to ask Mr. Best to mute his phone. Okay. Mike, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, the sound of your, your papers being shuffled uh, get transmitted all over, so if you would please uh, uh, be, be cognizant of the noise that you're making on that end, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you much. Uh, 
That was interesting. I wonder if there's a program that takes vice mayors. Uh, we'll have to check Nobody into that. <laughs> okay. All right. Others for call to the public. Okay. None. <clears throat> call to the public is now closed. Response to the public. Response to the public is an opportunity for the mayor to inform the public about how town officials addressed matters raised during call to the public at a previous meeting. Uh, we had several comments at our last call to the public, but no questions. Continuing onward to current event summaries and reports. This item is for information only. The mayor, any council member, or town manager may present a brief summary or report or of current events or ask a staff member to provide the same. Presentation on information requested by the mayor and council will be made and questions answered. No action will be taken. Uh, the only one who contacted me before the meeting was, I believe, you, Vice Mayor. Yeah, the uh, appointments subcommittee met. Uh, we uh, re reviewed some possible guidelines for uh, P and Z and other and other uh, subcommittees. We will make a presentation at the first meeting in January. Okay. For Thank you. Any other reports on this side? Committee reports? Any committee reports on this side? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Smith, I believe you have a status regarding town accomplishments. Um, yes, sir. And I was looking for Joe Duffy. Is he here? He just okay, stepped Okay, would up. you let him know he's going to be needed in just a second? Um, I, uh, I spoke at a conference last week uh, down in the Valley. The FCC, the federal government, um, in the Middle uh, Class Tax Relief Act of 2012, uh, stepped in to help the town with the regulation of wireless uh, uh, installations, and they've helped us quite a bit. Um, there's some new regulation that has come from the FCC pertaining the deployment of those sites and a reduction in our discretionary and regulatory scope. Um, so after reading the FCC order and contacting some other folks, uh, we will be updating our codes. Look for that sometime Q1. Uh, the FCC gives us a whopping 60 days to become compliant with federal law. Uh, we'll be turning that around as quick as we can. Ruth Mayday and I have already begun speaking. Um, so uh, expect so something from that in January or February of this year. And uh, I also wanted to ask Joe, um, at our last council meeting, uh, there was a brief discussion about the WIFA loan documents that are being prepared and the numbers for those. And there were some questions about amounts uh, associated with that. And Joe's got some details to share with us tonight. We do not have all of the closing documents in our hands today. We have most of that information. Of course, Mr. Reeder and Mr. Cafiso are finishing those details and those documents for us and will be present at your meeting next Tuesday night uh, to present those inf that information and, and those numbers to you. Okay. Uh, you had a yeah, question? If I might just ask that we be provided with a, when I asked the question about how much we're paying them, um, I got sort of a roundabout answer that it was in the RFQ. I personally would like a copy of that RFQ to see what our obligations are and whether we should, they've been our uh, council for a long time. So I would like to to be able to review that RFQ that provides the amount of money they're supposed to get. Okay. Is that, that be okay, Mr. Smith? Yes, Mayor. Actually, um, we, Jamie has helped us do some research. We've got the council authorization for the selection of Mr. Reeder and Mr. Cafiso for financial organizational work for the town as well as uh, the save uh, purchasing guidelines and the, the rules for that. I believe it's a formula-based uh, system. Okay. Uh, and the numbers that we're hearing from Mr. Reeder are better than in line with uh, those numbers. Okay, so, great. Yeah, and we'll provide them with you in your packet. For you. Okay, thank so, you, Mr. Um, that being said, we do have the draft documents and we're reviewing them. We're hoping to get the agenda out as early as tomorrow and we'll put the draft ones in there. There'll be a few changes before the ones you actually adopt at the meeting. But, but they're going to be minor. I just wanted to give you a quick little update on where we are on the WIFA clean water loan. Um, we've received the draft documents, as I said. The final sources and uses will be presented to Council next Tuesday night at the special meeting, and I'm going to present where we are today with those in just one second. Um, the WIFA loan docs all have an interest rate of 3.75%. 
but the actual rate won't be set by WIFA until December 26. So don't let that scare you because we know the rate's going to be less than 3%, but WIFA says this is what you need to present. Mm -hmm. When it's actually set, it'll also be subsidized. <clears throat> and Mark Reeder next week will get into what we're pretty sure that's going to be within the ballpark there. Um, and then, of course, pending council's approval of the loan documents on December 16th. The loan will close on December 30th. So this spreadsheet here really details where the funds, the sources and uses of funds are today. We, <clears throat> as you know, we're borrowing 3,442,500 from WIFA, and the town is going to come up with 200,000. Now that's not all at cash out of pocket, because as you remembered, we agreed to the amount that we owed fan construction, less the payments we've been making up until the time the loan closes. Well, that number is going to be almost $70,000. So the uses of the funds, of course, are going to purchase the fan wastewater treatment plant for $3,310,000. We're going to buy the screen for $132,500. The financial advisor fee, and that was Mark Reeder's firm, is going to be a little bit less than $92,000. The bond council fee, which is Michael Confiso's firm, is going to be $100,000. And we have another $8,000 in for other printing costs and things like that. When we initially proposed the loan with WIFA, we had a budget of $200,000 for closing costs. And this is pretty comparable to what it costs to borrow when you take out a loan. I've always told councils, I said, if you borrow a million or five, you're going to spend one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000, no matter what. So you might as well borrow five. You, can't go out, you shouldn't go out and borrow a million dollars when those costs are going to be pretty much the same no matter what you borrow. So this is a tentative preliminary. We'll nail down these numbers as much as possible by next week for you. And um, so, but remember, the WIFA loan summary, we're also saving $478,000 in forgivable principal. So not only are we getting a subsidized interest rate, probably closer to two than three, we're getting that forgivable principal amount, which is making the loan really worthwhile. So I just wanted to clarify that and put the preliminary numbers that we have out for you this evening. Okay, thank you. Did you have a question, Ms. Hatch? <laughs> Something that's been thrown at us by some of the public um, and, you know, it has to do with that sewer loan that in uh, 2004, Karen Fan was quoted as saying that 1% of the sales tax that was passed in uh, June of that year would be used to pay the financing for the sewer. So I just wanted you to go into that a little bit and let us know why is she saying that then. I, I can't speak for what Karen Fan said back in that time, okay. Councilman Hatch. I have no knowledge. Can of that. we pull up that resolution for the uh, the tax then and bring that along too? Well, yeah, that res if you're talking about the resolution when we passed the one percent tax that authorized the formation of the capital improvement fund, that money did has been going over to that capital improvement fund, and that can be used for water and wastewater things. But I can bring that. I'll put it in part of the packet actually tomorrow if you'd like. Okay. That, so that I think that would be important for the public's knowledge as well. We might as well do everything completely if we okay. can. Okay. okay. I'll be happy Thank to you. do that. Because they are questioning that now. So we're, we're hoping, um, as long as our bond council is okay with us sending these out to you tomorrow, we're hoping to get this out in the end of the packet at least, hopefully tomorrow, if not the next day. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Uh, Continuing with our uh, with our current event summaries and reports, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Gritman uh, is going to uh, be addressing our, our CDBG grant, and then I'd like to have Chief Wynn come up, if at all possible, uh, before we have our Scrivener's errors. Because <clears throat> everybody's nervous at having all these extra policemen in the back. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A month and a half ago, I came in front of you and talked to you about doing a special survey for the project that we had proposed for the CDBG funds. Um, I wanted to let you know that that survey has been completed, and we've received approval by the Department of Housing for our survey method and what it was. The neighborhood does qualify as low to moderate income, with 57% of the neighborhood having that distinction. So how the process works, once the survey gets approved by the Department of Housing, they then go through the rest of our application. So when they did that, and so I'm trying to just give you an update of some things that are coming down the road. So when they did that, they came up with four questions that they had that they wanted completed within 30 days. 
Um, and one of the items is um, when we had our second public hearing, it was here in front of the council. And in the public hearing notice that was in the newspaper, I did not write in there that the project we were considering was the paving project over in Chino Meadows too. Well, on this second hearing, you're supposed to list out a potential project. So I am going to be holding a second public hearing. Council is not required to be there. It's going to be in the paper tomorrow, and it will be held on um, Tuesday, December 30th at 4 p.m. here in the council chambers. It is truly a formality. We don't have to pass another resolution at all. So after that, um, we have another question regarding the environmental that we're going to be doing, that, but NACOG is going to be performing that. So we'll have that all into them for final approval. That should occur um, oh, probably in late December, early January. And then the project will go out for bid shortly thereafter, or shortly, probably around April, and completed by the end of, the whole project should be completed by the end of July of 2015. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Chief Wynn, if you would, please come up. You can take the mayor out now. Thank you. <laughs> you heard there was going to be trouble tonight. So. Uh, mayor and Council, we would just like to start taking an opportunity to introduce you to our new officers when they come on board so you can put names to faces. And we actually have two here tonight, and I'll have them step up so you can meet them. Officer Dominic Gillow uh, just graduated from the Police Academy last Thursday. And he's here with his training officer. And Officer Johnny Ferris, we stole from Parker Police Department. Cool. All right. And he's here with his field training officer. So this is two of our three new ones, and we'll try to get the other one in here to meet you next council meeting. Excellent. So They were supposed to give each a five-minute speech, so uh -huh. if you have any questions, we'll put them on the spot. The, see these, if they can think on their feet. These will be the faces that we'll see in our rearview mirror smiling <laughs> at us, right? All right. That's Good. all good. It's Thank nice you. to meet you. you. Welcome, Welcome. Boy. Welcome. Item C is a report on recently corrected Scrivener's errors pursuant to Town Code 10.20 and uh, authority to correct Scrivener's errors. And Ms. Lewis, I believe, has that. This is going to be really quick, unless you all have questions. Um, pursuant to the town code, we um, fix Scrivener's errors. We have certain errors that we can correct on um, town documents, and um, the attorney or I can do that. And then we just report to council that those, that those changes were made. Um, we recently corrected Resolution 576, which is an oldie moldy from 1998, but we found that it had been numbered incorrectly. It was two years out of sequence. So we just went and fixed the number to what it should have been in the sequence. And then July 23, 2013 council minutes, um, there was a date that was a year off. It was an obvious typo. And then ordinance 14787, uh, we corrected an exhibit that didn't have uh, the correct labeling on it. Okay. And that was that. And, and there were copies in your packets of those documents. So did you have any questions? Okay. I got all my questions answered this week. So <laughs> right. did anybody in the council have any? Okay, right, thank you thank very you. much, Ms. Lewis. <clears throat> Moving on to our consent agenda items. All those items listed below are li considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Any council member may request to remove an item from the consent agenda to be considered and discussed separately. Do we have any items to remove tonight? Nope. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lewis, would you please read our consent agenda items? Yes, sir. A, consideration and possible action to accept the November 18, 2014 regular meeting minutes. And B, consideration and possible action to approve financial report for the month ended October 31, 2014. Okay. The chair would entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve consent agenda items A and B. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All, all, all opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Almost had forgotten you there, Councilman <laughs> Best. Uh, I'll try and, and, and wait for your input here. Action items, item 7A, 
consideration and possible action to approve grant agreement with Arizona Commerce Authority for $250,000 Rural Economic Development Grant related to the Old Home Manor Industrial Park. Funds will be accounted for in the Public Works, Works Grant Fund. Match will be budgeted for in the Capital Improvement Fund. I believe, Ms. Mayday, you have this presentation. Yes, um, it's my understanding. It uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> but before you get into the presentation, um, I got to go over the presentation with Ms. Mayday uh, earlier this, this week, and uh, uh, she has questions and answers actually in the presentation. So is it okay if, we, if you do the presentation sure. and then folks save their questions for the end? That'd be fine. Okay, thank you. Um, before you, you have the funding agreement or the grant agreement with the Arizona Commerce Authority for the Rural Economic Development Grant. Uh, staff received notice uh, about a month ago that we had been awarded $250,000 for the infrastructure, proposed infrastructure improvements at Old Home Manor. Excuse me, Manor. Um, the mayor and I discussed a couple of uh, questions that have come up ar around the grant, and I wanted to click through this real quickly. Um, first of all, the policy rationale, whoops, back up, where is it? Don't tell me this isn't going to click for me. Uh, the policy rationale for this is in the 2014 strategic plan that council approved in se uh, September. Key result area number two, the sustainable economic and community development. Goal number one, complete the uh, Chino Valley Industrial and Commercial Development Plan. Objective A, develop the Chino Valley Industrial and Commercial Development Plan. Strategy is to focus on efforts for funding infrastructure for Old Home Manor. Come on. And the action that we fulfilled is, or have met is to submit the grant proposal for the infrastructure at Old Home Manor. Um, there is some, uh, has been some discussion about why uh, this is advantageous for the, for the region and how we are competitive with Prescott Air Park. Um, in reviewing the, pro the properties available in the Prescott Air, Air Park, both in terms of raw land and in terms of developed parcels. The average uh, square foot cost for Prescott Air Park is about $5.69 a foot. Um, because the town owns the property at Old Home Manor, we can make it available as low as at no cost or a nominal $1 per square foot fee if we decide to backload a lease for uh, a prospective tenant. Uh, in terms of building costs, the average for a commercial building in this area is $50 a square foot. Um, that's from the economic analysis that uh, um, Elliot Pollock did for the town <clears throat> prior to the uh, bond election. So just an estimate, a one acre lot in the Prescott Air Park is $247,000 and 856 $247,856, as opposed to a zero to 43560 land cost at Old Home Manor. Clearly, the construction costs for the structure are going to be very similar, but that is a significant difference in uh, cost and puts us at a competitive advantage with the air park. In discussing how much the town will have to provide and match, we have been looking at this project in terms of including a natural gas line from um, Unisource and not including that gas line. Discussions with um, EDA have uh, made that decision pretty much for us because they will not fund the installation of the gas line. That um, is not something that they will cover because it's a private utility, so we must um, come up with a different way to do that. We have been discussing some different options. While it will be included as part of the project, it is not part of the funding request. So that consequently has lowered the amount of uh, match that we will be required to provide. And you can see here, um, I started at 10% and went up to 50% match. The uh, we will be applying as a special needs community rather than in terms of unemployment or uh, per capita income and um, at the suggestion of EDA because then the investment committee determines the amount of the uh, match that the town has to provide and the funding that the EDA will provide. So that minimum amount that we will have to provide would be the 20% mark. So in looking at the, at the um, sources for the, uh, 
for the uh, match, we have the $250,000 from the Economic Development Grant from uh, the Commerce Authority. We have the $85,000 in town cash match, $50,000 of that was budgeted for 2014, and the, an additional 35 will be budgeted in 2015. We've waived $37,750 in permit fees that we ordinarily would be collecting. Um, and then the grant administration, uh, we've included 10% administration for um, the match at 204,782. So that puts us at a total of $577,532 for match, or 28%. Uh, we could, to hit a 30% funding um, match, we would have to include another 38,000. I'm sorry, 36,815. That uh, money could be included in, in the ask for the uh, grant administration. Again, that's something that EDA goes through and looks at the work program, what's involved, and how much they feel is, is a, a, an adequate amount. But 10% for grant purposes is typical. So there have been a lot of questions about, about what if certain things happen. So what it, the first question is what is exactly we will spend the AC mon ACA money on? This grant is specifically for hard costs. So that means that we have to buy actual parts, equipment, things that we will be building with. So in this case, um, just in the water and sewer line and manholes alone, we've already consumed more than the $250,000. Uh, the next question was, what if we can't spend the $250,000 in 18 months? This grant is on a reimbursement pay basis, so if we get to the end of the 18 months and we have money that we have not yet been reimbursed, it's simply forfeited. Uh, what if we can't hit the job creation and cast capital investment targets? Those are in, uh, estimates only. They're for reporting purposes and for um, ACA to track how the money is spent and how many jobs are actually created. And what if we use the $250,000 from ACA and the EDA grant does not go through? Uh, we don't spend any of that money until the EDA approval comes through. If um, any construction that we do on this project that is included in the EDA grant prior to their approval, they will not reimburse. It's very difficult to get them to reimburse that once you've already spent the money. So we don't spend any of that until that's done. And that's it. All right. Questions, Ms. Hatch? There are several. You want me just to do uh, them one you, at a it, time? If you would, please uh, refer to the heading at the top of the panel if you, if you have that listed or if you'd like her to. Um, um, well, it starts with, um, first of all, if uh, we forfeit any part of that grant uh, due to time limitations, do we then have to make up that difference with the ADA out of cash from the town? No, we well, don't we have to make meet the match then. We for the EDA, yes. Yeah, so we. I'm sorry, I thought you said ACA. No, My no. apologies. With the EDA, then we would yes. have to make that difference up, and they're very stringent in their time requirement. Um, and, and just to clarify, my understanding from um, the committee meetings and uh, from our presentation with the EDA. Our area was granted a, a special designation, and the minimum match that EDA requires is 30 percent. Um, and you're talking about 20 percent. So, where is that 20 percent plus 10 percent for administrative costs, or where are you getting the 20 percent? The 20 percent is out of the the NOFA from um, EDA. The special needs is in section. 3B2, special need criteria. For the purposes of de determining eligibility based on a special need, an applicant must provide current and appropriate economic and demographic statistics for the um, applicable region to support the identified need. And then it goes on to say in, oh, where is it? Uh, further on in the uh, that same section that uh, 
project subject to a special need is outlined in 3B2 above, EDA will determine the maximum allowable investment rate not to exceed 80% of the total project cost based on the actual or threatened overall economic situation of the region. So could you give me that section number again? So sure. I can go back and point it out to the individual that's telling me it's 30%. Uh, it is section 3B2 of um, the actual no, for the announcement of federal funding opportunity. Okay. 3B2 in the announcement. Uh, 3B2, yeah. It's on page 13 of 38. Okay. It's the top paragraph. Thank you. And if I may ask uh, one more, when will you find out from the EDA whether or not they uh, are going to give us the grant? They have expressed an interest as soon as we can get provide them evidence of a match, which we will have with this, then they will consider the grant application. Okay. And it, they've assured me that it's a 30 to 60 day process, and which is so fast. We'll lose 60 days in that first time period that we're required to start within six months. Correct. correct. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I was really surprised, Miss Miss Mayday. I went over with a handful of questions, and she had them already in the presentation. I don't know how that one happened, but anyway, thank you. Any questions on this side? Okay. Um, excellent. Thank you. Um, I guess we can now discuss it. Does, is there any discussion among council members? Okay. Sounds like the timeline's about right. Mm -hmm. so okay. Doable. And yeah. one thing that I don't believe that you brought up is is we can always give this money back. Correct. correct? Okay. If okay. for whatever reason, if, if council accepts the award this evening and EDA says, you know what, we want a 50% match and we simply can't come up with it, we just notify ACA and say, look, we can't make the deal with, with um, EDA, so we we'll give back the AC. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was one of the questions that I did ask that you didn't have listed, so thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We don't actually get the money, we get reimbursed. Correct. Yeah, right. So it's a figure of speech to say we give the you money bet. back. You bet. We give them back their IOU. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Got to love government. Okay. You're ready for a motion. The right, where the chair is ready for a motion. I make a motion that we uh, approve. Uh, item seven, a uh, action <coughs> item A, uh, approved grant agreement with the Arizona Co Commerce Authority for the Rural Economic Development Grant. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I apologize, Councilman Best, I didn't ask you for any questions, but I hope you didn't have any. Oh. <laughs> We, we had a motion and a second, and we yeah. had I, I thought we had a second. We did. Okay. We did. Okay, cool. I'm just saying Mike didn't get it. Oh, okay. Good enough. You going to vote? Yeah. Okay. Aye. Aye. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries uh, once again, and uh, on we go. That's because you were videoed today. That's All right, you know. yeah. <laughs> Item B. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Item B, consideration and possible action to approve the agreement for professional consulting services with Civil Tech Engineering for development of the 200-yard long-range shooting facility in an amount not to exceed $17,927. Funds to come from the Police Department Public Range Grant Line Item. Mr. Gretman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. As you know, um, we have the existing shooting facility out there is, is overseen by the Prescott Area Gun Club. Um, when we created all that relationship, the town committed to constructing a long-range shooting facility. Um, the 200 yards, this, this, this project will provide the design for that. Um, Civil Tech was chosen primarily because, um, well, for several reasons. One of them is uh, the Prescott Gun Club had already started the design work on this. Uh, they, they had created a relationship with Civil Tech, went over what they wanted it to turn into. Um, so we just continued on with what they have done. 
The reason why Civil Tech themselves are a good fit for what the town's uses are, um, there's a rather large drainage that comes in on the north side of the 100 yard, and since we're going to be building on the immediate east side of that, we're going to have to contend with that drainage and how do we get it across this shooting facility without inundating it. Um, Civil Tech will look at all the different options that we need to come up with to effectively transmit the water um, west to east where it wants to go. The second thing is a lot of these, the dirt coming out of this project will be used as fill materials as we start raising the other roads that we've committed to. Those are Center Street, Road 1 East, Kalanich, Four and a Half, Brownlow, and the Peavine Trail Roadway. So Civil Tech, being the design firm doing our 30% plans, because we're not creating 100% plans on those projects, Civil Tech will be able to balance the dirt coming out of this shooting facility with where we're going to need it at with the other projects. So just going on with what the um, uh, Prescott Area Gun Club had already started, it just makes perfect sense that we continue on the same contract, and that's what you have before you. Okay. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Um, I have a question before uh, the council. Um, Mr. Shaw, I believe you're uh, up to speed on, on lead abatement for rifle ranges and all that? Okay, excellent. If you would, Mr. Gritman, please be speaking with him as far as any future lead abatement problems or whatever. Um, sure. Okay. I mean, typically, you, you go in there and you just comb out the uh, impact berm every few years and harvest the material okay. out of there. It's not. We actually construct when we construct it. Civil Tech is also aware with, with NRA standards. Mm -hmm. When we built the last one, we actually have a two foot. Um, area of AB that mm -hmm. is placed on the face of the original dirt embankment. Mm -hmm. We actually have posts driven down to help hold that up. And w we provide the area where you just go in and you comb out, is what they typically do in order to do the lead abatement. And you only do that every few years. Okay. Yeah, so. I, was, I was just thinking uh, yeah, better to, to know about it going in and Mr. Shalm having yeah. been through that training, if you would please yes. touch base with him. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a little confused. Is this uh, long range um, location part of the gun club or is it part of our tactical range? It's part of the gun club. Okay. It's just to the east of the 100 yard, the existing 100 yard facility, 100 meter facility. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're, uh, thank you. and this, I believe, uh, uh, Councilwoman Hatch was the only person on our council that was present when that. Uh, uh, when that uh, contract was signed with PSC, I believe this is one of the last remaining obligations we have. As with far PSC. as I know, this is Excellent. the last of the remaining. Um, I can tell you, we're not planning on constructing it until next year sometime. This is just to get the design work done so we can do all the balancing work on our other projects. Right. Since we're not going to be building Road 1 East until r roughly about 10 months from now, um, we're not proposing to excavate this material until sometime next, when it's getting cold again next year. No sense digging it twice. Exactly. Okay, thank yep. you. All right. Thank Any you. further questions for Mr. Gritman? Okay, thank you. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Uh, motion to approve uh, action item 7, Bravo. Uh, recommend approval for professional consulting services with Civil Tech Engineering for the development of 200-yard long-range shooting facility for an amount not to exceed $17,927. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. On item C, I received a uh, request from staff uh, to uh, pull item C to postpone it till, uh, till our January meeting. I'm going to go ahead and, and read the item itself. Uh, consideration and possible action to adopt resolution number 14-1053 in support of Arizona Sunshine 2015, a free health services event in the Quad Cities area to be held June 17th and 18th of 2015. And I believe we uh, had some questions that needed to be resolved before we actually uh, brought that resolution before uh, before the council. So. Should we move to table it? Um, uh, since it's on the agenda, I yeah. believe we could. We, we need to. Okay. I make a motion that we table table item seven. Charlie. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to table item seven C. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, 
and we're all the way to executive session. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read all three items on our executive session. Council may vote to recess the regular meeting and hold an executive session, which will not be open to the public for the following purposes. Pursuant to ARS 38-431.03A4, for discussion or consultation with the town attorney in order to consider its position and instruct the town attorney regarding the town's position in, pend in pending or litigation or in settlement discussions conducted in order to resolve litigation in the matter of Lavacara Trust versus Town of Chino Valley. Item B, pursuant to ARS 38-431.03A1 for discussion or consideration of employment, assignments, appointments, promotion, dismissal, salary of town manager Robert Smith and pursuant to ARS 38-431.03A4 for discussion or consultation with the town attorney in order to consider its position and instruct the town attorney regarding the town's position regarding the contract with town manager Robert Smith. And item C, pursuant to ARS section 38-431.03A3 and 4 for discussion or consultation for legal advice <clears throat> with the town attorney and in order to consider its position and instruct the town attorney regarding the town's position regarding the and the settlement of the matter of Cortez versus town of Chino Valley. Um, would the would the council like a short recess before we go into uh, okay we'll go ahead and and uh, entertain a motion uh, to head into executive session after a short I make recess. a motion that we uh, go into executive session on items eight executive session a B and C after Second. a short Second. recess after a 10 minute recess okay after a 10 minute recess we have a motion we have a second, second. all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye all opposed same sign motion carries still with us Sit, get adjourned. Okay, our meeting has been reconvened. Action items resumed. Uh, <clears throat> item A consideration and possible action to approve an employment agreement with town manager Robert Smith or an amendment to his current agreement. With the town, we have given instruction to our attorney and to our vice mayor. Uh, item B, consideration and possible action to select an appraiser for property anticipated to be transferred to Cortez Enterprises Incorporated pursuant to the terms of the provisional settlement agreement dated March 6, 2014. Funding will come from the general fund contingency line item and we have instructed staff on that. The chair would entertain a motion to? Motion to adjourn. Uh -huh. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. This has been really fun. It's been really fun. It is.